Welcome to the team and thanks for joining us. I mean, real, real simple question. Why'd you make this move to the booth? Well, to be honest, I, I, I didn't really seek it out. I, I've always kind of flirted with Tommy. Tommy's always said to me that he thought I would be, be a good addition if I ever wanted to go down this path. And, and uh, you know, they were looking for people to try out, and, and uh, I needed a trip to Hawaii anyway. So it worked out well for my schedule, and, and hopefully it works out well for, for NBC Sports, too. Hey, Kevin, I know you haven't been in the booth just yet, but I'm curious if anything has surprised you since the announcement that you were going to be a broadcaster, uh, either in the reaction to that that news or in your preparation to do the job? Well, two, two sides of that. I, I was shocked that more players didn't give me grief. I was expecting some, some uh, pullback from the players <laughs> like I was going to talk badly about them or be against them now or something like that, but I really didn't get any of that. And then, uh, then yesterday from the preparation side, it, I sat in that truck with Tommy for an hour and I said, if this, if this is anything like what I have to do the next three days, I'm out. I can't handle this. <laughs> this it's too much, too much stress going on in here. <laughs> but Kevin, when you have Tommy in your ear in the truck tomorrow, at the very least, you're going to find out new ways to cuss that you didn't know before. <laughs> but I'm wondering, is this the first time you've ever actually had a boss for a day's work in your adult life? This, uh, yeah. So I had a meeting on Wednesday at 1.30, and I told all the guys on the putting green I had to hurry up and get to my first meeting as an employee in my life. So uh, I made it on time, and I don't think I've messed up yet. Kids, as you well know, the guy sitting to my left uh, has uh, pissed people off a time or two. <laughs> and, I, and I think you would probably agree uh, that's part of that job. If you're going to be an analyst, you have to be uh, willing to deliver the critical commentary. And in this case, you're not even 40 yet, Kiz, so you're, you're, you're friends with all these guys. Uh, so how will you approach that when it is time uh, to be critical? I don't think I'm going to have a problem telling a, a poor shot's a poor shot or, or what I thought they did was a, uh, a poor decision. Um, but I'm not going to be overly critical on the person or, or try to offend anyone because I don't have to go talk to them next week in the locker room at the Sony Open. So uh, I'll keep that in the back of my mind. Uh, and, and I just don't have a delay button. i got to remember that the whole time. <laughs> Kiz, you're famous for a lot of quips and quotes, uh, none more so than ain't no hobby after you hit a great shot and everybody was wide-eyed at your your skills i would argue that that's what made johnny miller so great that he treated that job as not a hobby uh, the same way he treated his preparation to play great golf so two questions one are you prepared to do that work and two if you're successful at it uh, is this something you'd like to stick with and make a career out of i really don't know on the second part because I don't even know how it's going to go. They may not even let me go tomorrow after today. You never know. So let, let's get through one week and see what they think and what I think. Um, on the preparation side, I've been tag teaming along with Dan and Kurt and, and the boys, uh, Rolfing and Smiley and Wood, and asking them a ton of questions and, and just trying to ride around and see what's going on. I don't watch a ton of golf at home because I'm most of the time playing, or when I am not playing, I don't really turn it on. So it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of my mouth over the next uh, two and a half days when I'm actually watching golf and, and commenting on it. So um, who knows, man? We're all, we're all coming out of this uh, brand new, and, and uh, what comes in my little brain and my big mouth will be new to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, have you ever had a time when uh, an announcer on the air said something critical of you that made you hot? And to kind of Rich's point, are you ready if somebody comes at you with a sharp criticism? Well, I feel like if you're always speaking the truth, you can back it up, right? I'm not going to make up something that I think's bad about someone. Um, as long as I'm pretty genuine in, in the way I feel about it, I don't have a problem backing myself up. And I've played on, on tour for 13 years, and I don't think I've ever had a crossword with one guy. Mm. And, and I know it's your job. And I think that's part of the cool part of this week is I'm getting to see how hard it is on the other side. And, I, you know, all I've had so far is appreciation for what all you guys do and what the, the whole NBC team does and, and all the people behind the scenes. Everybody's been so helpful and anything I wanted or asked for, it's right there. And I'm just amazed at, at how well it's run. Kevin, in the past we've heard active players who've gone into the booth for a time say that they came out of it with a different perspective on their game when they sit there and realize how many mediocre shots the best players in the world actually hit that they're not aware of otherwise. Are you expecting some kind of similar epiphany about your own game this week? 
Well, I sat in yesterday and, and watched the golf for three and a half hours in the booth with the guys and wore the headset. And uh, I remember watching the Scheffler, uh, Hovland, and Jordan Spieth group, and they got done and they shot a combined 22 under. And when we got off air, I was like, I didn't see one crazy good shot that they hit all day. I mean, Hovland made a few long putts, but rest of it looked pretty normal, you know, driving down the fairway, hit a few greens, make a few putts, birdie the par fives, and 22 under. I was thinking, man, I, I really make the game harder than it has to be sometimes. Let's uh, talk a little golf right now, kids. Scotty Scheffler, number one in the world. What makes him so good? Well, he does everything well. I think he... Uh, you know, every day it'd be nice to wake up and know you're going to have 180 ball speed and it's going to go fairly straight. And uh, I think he, he's getting better with the flat stick. He just has to be around average with the putter, which, you know, I dream of the days that I could do that. But, um, you know, he hits it, hits it so well. Uh, I love the way him and Ted Scott work on, on numbers and, and trying to get the right club in the, in the hand. And, and it looks like to me he never hits a shot unless he's fully prepared to hit that shot. And I think that's a huge aspect. Um, what do you think of the newest sensation, Ludwig Ober? Man, he looks, uh, I haven't gotten to watch him much, but I, I, everything I've seen from my highlights is it looks like effortless power. It just doesn't seem like he's trying real hard and, and the ball takes off with 180 ball speed, which is kind of the norm these days. Um, you know, I, I knew he wasn't off to a, hot, a great start today. I think he doubled the first hole, but um, I think he'll be a force to contend with for a lot of years out here. And, and as long as he can handle all the fame and notoriety that's coming along with it, which everyone struggles with that at times, but um, he's got a good team around him. I think he'll be a great force. Yeah, those great points. Uh, you know, the announcement came, what, just a couple of months ago or so. I heard you talk about uh, walking around with Dan and, and Kurt. Uh, certainly they're uh, a, a well, a deep well of, of knowledge. But I'm just curious, in the last month or so, have you reached out to anybody else, talked to any players about uh, the difficulties of the job or what you might anticipate at the job or how to get uh, better at this job? Well, I've talked to everybody that I knew I was going to work with because I, my biggest fear is I don't want to talk over someone. I want to do, I want it to be a team sport. I want us all to be able to participate, and I don't know when to talk because I don't watch that much. So I, I really sat in yesterday trying to get in the flow of it. So I, I really sought out Smiley and Wood and, and Kurt and uh, Rolfing and talked to Steve Sands a good bit. Obviously talked to Dan a lot. Uh, I just want it to flow like I'm. I've been doing it forever, which I know it's not going to, but that's the, the hope of the day is I, I want it to, to feel like uh, I've always been doing this. Yeah, uh, you've heard this, no doubt, Kiz, and I think we're, we're all, you know, hoping uh, for that. Just be you, be Kiz, because you're the one and only, and uh, uh, we really look forward to it. Uh, yeah, have a great I told call. somebody that, uh... all right, man, I appreciate it. Thank you, Cheers, Kiz. Kiz. Kevin Kisner.